We're here with Mort Klein, who is the national president of the Zionist Organization of America, one of the oldest, prominent, and most important uh, Jewish organizations in the United States. Mort, thank you for coming. Welcome to the JNS studios here in Jerusalem. It's great to be uh, with the most important uh, outlet for Jewish news in the world, JNS. It's an honor. But we are not one of the oldest. We are the oldest pro-Israel group in the United States, founded in 1897. Past presidents include Louis Brandeis, Stephen Wise, Abba Hill Silver, and such. And more Klein. Sorry. So we have a storied, a storied, a storied history. Mort, you're here for uh, the annual Conference of Presidents uh, Mission to Israel. It is a unique mm -hmm. time uh, to be in Israel as Israel's fighting a war against Hamas in Gaza, also against Hezbollah, against the Houthis. There's a lot happening, and mm -hmm. the diplomatic and political pressure on the state of Israel right now is greater than ever, uh, particularly toward the uh, the recognition by world powers of a Palestinian state. Uh, President Biden, Anthony Blinken, others saying that a Palestinian state should be the outcome uh, of the October 7th massacre, even before uh, Israel finishes its war with Gaza. You have uh, not been a proponent of a Palestinian state for, for many years. Uh, tell me, What's the situation now, and, and, and what, do you, what do you think can happen here? First of all, I always refer to it as a Hamas-Iran-Palestinian-Arab Arab terrorist state. That's what it will be. That's what it is now. It will not get better once they have even more power. And I'm, uh, I'm concerned that the leaders of Israel, they keep saying they oppose a state because this is not a time to reward uh, Arab Islamic terrorism. They never say the most important thing is that this will endanger Israel. They don't say it. To have a terrorist state on Israel's longest border to give them even more power to do harm to Jewish people. Uh, and when you see what they did with the mini state in, 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 in Gaza, how much more will they do when they have land uh, in significant parts of Judea and Samaria and all of Gaza as well? And that's not said. I, I find that very peculiar because that's that's the that's the most serious reason we should not have a state. Not to mention the second reason that's never mentioned. This is holy Jewish land given us to us by God Almighty. We're here because the Torah says this is land given to us by God. Why aren't we saying that? The Arabs keep saying all well, this land is holy to them. We Jews never say it's holy to them. We're embarrassed by it. We should not be embarrassed. You have a billion Christians who would respond affirmatively to understanding that that is another reason we are not permitted as Jews to give holy land away uh, to non-Jews that was given to us by God Almighty. You have uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu now pushing back uh, on some of the pressure, saying that uh, Israel would does not buy into the diktats uh, of a unilateral recognition of Palestinian statehood. But then he doubles down and says that the only way uh, to create a, a solution between the parties is through negotiations. Um, is this the wrong message to be sending right now? I think what Netanyahu should be saying, or any Israeli leader should be saying, we will not even fathom the possibility of negotiating until the Palestinian Authority stops paying Arabs lifetime pensions to murder Jews. They spend $400 million a year on that. Here's an opportunity to let the world know that. Most of the world doesn't even know this. Until they rescind the names of hundreds of schools, streets, sports teams, and children's camps named after Jew killers, they must all be rescinded or we don't want to talk to them. And until they say publicly they accept the existence of Israel as it is now as a Jewish state, if they can't do those things, there's no point in negotiating. That's what Netanyahu should, should, be, should be saying right now. Now, President Biden uh, came to Israel just days after the war. He gave one of the most pro-Israel speeches uh, that he's ever given in his career and maybe that uh, any American president has given here in the state of Israel uh, when he was here. And yet uh, we're starting to see as the war drags on and we're now in the fourth month that the American support is not uh, what it seemed to be in the very early days. <laughs> Uh, you've you've known uh, President Biden for a long time. Uh, you, tell me about uh, whether you think he really does have a, a deep place in his heart, uh, sentimental attachment to the state of Israel, and is he is he supporting Israel? Is he looking out for Israel's best interests currently? First of all, that speech upset me 
I've heard everyone tell me what a great speech it was. When you come a day or two after this monstrous massacre, mutilation, rape, torture of innocent Jewish people, the least he can do, of course, is just say, show sympathy for this nightmare. But this, in the first few sentences of that speech, he demanded the establishment of a Palestinian Arab state. That was inappropriate. That showed that that's really what his plan was. He's going to come uh, and uh, be very supportive of Israel, be sympathetic to Israel in order to make it easier to promote a Palestinian state. That was the reason he did this. And, uh, and people who say how supportive he is of Israel, the man allowed access of $16 billion to the Islamic Republic of Iran that calls for Israel's destruction repeatedly. And on day one of his administration, what did he do? He eliminated, ended all sanctions on Iran, Iran who's committed to Israel's destruction. How can someone, how can we say someone is supportive of Israel if he, they, he funds Iran, eliminates all sanctions, allows Iran to sell oil, which they weren't permitted to under the sanctions, under Trump sanctions, and they've gone from $4 billion in reserves to $100 billion in reserves, and using that money to fund Hamas, Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad and other terrorist groups. So no, if you're pro-Israel, you don't do these things. And let me tell you something else about the Iran thing that no one will say, but I will. People say they're doing this because they want to appease Iran. They want to moderate them by giving them funding, eliminating sanctions, uh, to, uh, to show this kindness to them. Uh, and, and, and we believe, hopeful, and we believe maybe they will moderate. Nobody is that naive to think that these radical, deeply religious, in their own words, mullahs, will change because of money or, uh, uh, or, or, or sanctions being ended. I believe, I believe that this is being done by Obama and now Biden to strengthen Iran intentionally, to strengthen Iran intentionally to be able to hurt Israel. This is a very sinister thing I've stated, but this is what I believe because they cannot be so naive to think we're giving them billions of dollars and allowing them to make $100 billion, thinking this will change them when they, they know there's no way this will change them. So I believe this is something sinister, and we have to speak out about this. This is one of the great dangers in the world, strengthening this Arab Nazi regime in Iran. Well, Iran, they're not Arab per se, uh, Islamic. Islamic extremists. Nazi, you're quite right. I stand corrected. Well, you could make good arguments that the Biden administration should be putting harsh sanctions on Iran. We actually have seen in the last week that the Biden administration has put sanctions on Jews uh, living in Judea and Samaria, uh, even though they haven't been convicted of crimes uh, in the state of Israel. They're being accused by the U.S. administration of fostering violence against their Palestinian neighbors. And now Air the Israeli banks have actually shut off uh, their bank accounts, frozen their ability to conduct transactions in the country in which they are our citizens, which is the state of Israel. Um, you know, tell me a little bit about uh, what this says about the, the Biden administration and what should Israel be doing to fight back against this? You've just given further proof that this Biden-Obama administration is not friendly toward Israel. They're hostile. I remember in 1982, uh, Biden holding a hearing, threatening Prime Minister Menachem Begin to cut all aid to Israel if they built any more in Judea and Samaria. And Begin, of course, strong, responded very strongly, condemning Biden, saying they will not be intimidated by threats. That was 1982. And whenever I've lobbied him, he's always expressed deep concern about Israel expansion, uh, is, is, Israel wanting to grow larger. When I honored him, I did honor him at one of my major di national dinners. In his speech to the Zionist Organization of America, he knows who we are. He, he is my friend. I know him very well. He condemned settlements, building in Judea and Samaria, demanded a Palestinian state. Biden has never been a good friend to Israel. This is simply untrue. And we see it now with the four uh, boys who have uh, not been convicted uh, of anything, and he's putting sanctions on innocent boys. Any sanctions on Abbas? No. A man who pays people to murder Jews? Any sanctions on any Palestinian Arabs who've d done vile terrorism? No. This is to punish Israel and to frighten Israel into, into 
uh, to intimidate Israel, to accept the diktats of this administration, which is to establish a Palestinian state in Gaza and Judea and Samaria under the leadership of Abbas. <clears throat> I say <clears throat> under Abbas because that's what Tony Blinken said. He wants Abbas to run it. By the way, not only Tony Blinken said it, our own Dennis Ross said Abbas should run it. This is the height of insanity. I might also say the Reform Jewish Movement, uh, uh, the AJ Committee, Ted Deutsch, ADL, and uh, APAC on their website right now are supporting a Palestinian Arab terrorist state because that's what it'll be. So, uh, uh, no, Biden uh, is, 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 is not a friend. I mean, there, there's people worse than Biden, but he... What a, 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 one of the reasons he's become even more hostile to Israel is Obama behind the scenes. I have it from people on the Hill and even in the White House who've told me that Obama did not want to endorse Biden for president. Biden pleaded with him to endorse him when he was running. And Obama said, I will endorse you if you do what I want po po policy-wise and uh, put p people in important posts that I recommend. And we that, see many of the members of the Obama foreign policy team on the Biden foreign policy team. Almost every important post, especially those affecting Israel, are friends of Obama. So Biden has done what Obama wants, and uh, that's one of the reasons you see this hostility now uh, uh, in the Biden administration. And we're getting now into an election season in the United States. There'll be a national election in November 2024. Uh, we just saw members of the Biden administration go to Michigan. Uh, where we keep hearing here in Israel that uh, many members of Biden's progressive base uh, are threatening not to vote uh, for Biden in the elections because they accuse him of being too friendly uh, to the state of Israel. You're, you're here criticizing uh, Biden's policy. On the other side, they're saying that uh, Biden has been too supportive of Israel. And here in Israel, it looks as though... Uh, this war, which is an existential threat and issue to the state of Israel, has turned into a, an election uh, football, so to speak, uh, in the United States. Uh, what what does Israel have to look forward to in, in the coming election? <laughs> I don't think the actions he's taken is for electioneering reasons. Uh, he's been hostile for a long time, frankly. Of course, there can be worse. They want him to st to stop uh, rearming Israel during this war. That can't happen because Congress would not allow it. The Armed Services Committees would not allow it. So his hands are tied there. This is not Biden doing this. This is, thank God, the U.S. Congress who is supporting uh, uh, rearming Israel. And when we're talking about helping Israel over a, a, a Nazi-like regime from Hamas, whose charter... Article 7 calls for the murder of every Jew, not just Israeli Jews, every Jew. Article 13 calls for Israel's destruction. How on earth can Congress not help Israel to defeat Arab Nazis whose hatred toward America is almost as great as their hatred uh, toward Israel? So uh, uh, I think this hostility is simply due to what the policy objective is, which is to, to set up a state and to strengthen Iran and I think the uh, I think the election issue is 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 not important. And of course, the people who hate Israel, especially in the Muslim community in America, they want Biden to be even more atrocious toward Israel. So they're pressuring him to 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 act uh, in e even more uh, uh, hostile ways. Yeah, it's hard to imagine that uh, progressives would not vote for Biden in order to allow for a potential Republican president or President Trump to come back into office, which would threaten them on so many other domestic and social and cultural issues. Uh, so you know, the idea that uh, this is being uh, given to Israel is a reason that uh, they're harming the Biden's uh, position in the upcoming election. It seems to me that Israel has to do whatever it can to recognize that this is not an election issue. This is an existential issue. And Israel has to go ahead and, and do what's in its own uh, best interest as a sovereign nation. <laughs> And the polls in America still show overwhelming support, thank God, for Israel over the Palestinian Arabs. So Israel should take solace in that. In fact, I'm bringing uh, 10 or more members of Congress to Israel at the end of March. They've asked me to bring them to Israel. And I said, why do you want to come to Israel now? They said, because we want to strengthen Israel's resolve to do whatever they need to do to crush Hamas and other Arab terrorist groups and not worry about the administration. 
that's the kind of people we have in Congress right now. Uh, from the top on, from Michael Johnson, Speaker of the House, on, on down. I, I'm sorry. Well, I shouldn't say it as a 501c3, but unfortunately, uh, uh, the Democrats have been less friendly to Israel than the Republicans. That's not a political statement. It's a statement of fact that uh, 30 years ago, I would have said the opposite, but things uh, uh, have changed. But yes, Israel should understand Americans overwhelmingly support Israel. And not only is it existential, but even in some other aspect of this, if they don't crush the terrorists of, of Gaza, who's going to live in southern Israel? Who's going to live in northern Israel if they don't crush Hezbollah? <laughs> and I wanted to ask Gantz this question. Uh, Betty Gantz was speaking to the Conference of Presidents earlier today. Uh, I wanted to ask him. No, he said, we have to change the textbooks. They teach hatred and violence against Jews. Where was he for 30 years? We've known this for 30 years. Where were the Israeli administration for 30 years not making a big issue out of it and doing everything they can to change the textbooks for 30 years? Not now. And the question is, who would change those textbooks, right? <laughs> Somebody has to be sovereign over the territory and controlling the education. In Eastern system. Jerusalem, Israel is sovereign over. They have horrific textbooks and nothing's done. Because they've allowed UNRWA to come in and to, yes, to run the school it. system. That never should be allowed. And secondarily, I would like to ask Gantz and the other uh, leaders of Israel, where were they for all these years? They knew these underground tunnels were being built. Why did, weren't they destroying them years ago? Why did they allow this to happen? Why did they allow 100,000 100, missiles to be sent into Gaza from Iran and 150,000 even more powerful missiles be sent to Lebanon from Iran without destroying those missiles? They know where those missiles are. They never destroy them. And those missiles weren't going to be there uh, for display. They were going to be there to be used. And I really blame Israel for not doing anything to destroy those missiles. Now, they tell me, well, they're in the midst of civilian areas. Fine. Tell the civilians, you've got 48 hours. We're going to destroy all those missile uh, uh, supply uh, areas. Uh, we're not going to permit them to be there and threatening our lives. Uh, so I have many questions, uh, not to mention the question everyone has is, uh, how could this uh, atrocity have occurred without Israel uh, knowing about the years they've been training for this openly in fields? And no one has ever given me an answer to that question. Yeah, I think it's going to be a long time before the answers uh, start to come out. Meanwhile, as Israel continues to fight the war, the current government, the uh, military intelligence establishments doing everything that they can to delay uh, the accounting uh, and the commission of inquiry, which most Israelis want. Now, I would say that most Israelis have woken up on October 7th and recognized that a Palestinian state cannot be the natural outbirth of the worst terror massacre in the history of the modern state of Israel, a day in which more Jews died than since the Holocaust. Um, and yet, as you mentioned before earlier, uh, many of the heads of Jewish communal organizations in the United States uh, still continue to openly support a Palestinian state. You're here with the Conference of Presidents now. Most of those organizations don't share uh, your political views. Tell me, why is there a disconnect now between the leaders of most of these uh, legacy mainstream Jewish communal organizations and where the overwhelming majority of Israelis are today? <laughs> yes, as I mentioned, uh, uh, the only voices we've heard from the mainstream organizations have been supporting a Palestinian state. Not a single Jewish organization except the Zionist Organization of America has come out publicly and stated we oppose a Palestinian Arab terrorist state. It's really astonishing. So why are they doing this? I believe that the Jewish leadership, that this is not an ideology, it's not a principle of belief. I believe it is out of a fear of our enemy fear of the Arab terrorists, a fear that if we don't appease them, they'll kill more of us. They'll become even more dangerous toward us. And they are so afraid of the Arabs as an enemy of the Jewish people that they want to appease them, give them a state that, so they'll stop killing us, so they'll stop uh, harming us in any serious ways. I think this is fear. Uh, uh, and, and that's why uh, they respond this way, because it, it makes no sense whatsoever to want to give more power uh, to uh, uh, such a hostile, hateful enemy as the, as the Arabs. 
uh, that we have now. But do you think that some of it also is political uh, with regard to uh, access that some of these organizations have uh, to uh, U.S. political leaders and not wanting to cross them? I mean, you've been willing to come out and cross any leader uh, on ideological means uh, some of these uh, heads of the Jewish organizations valuing their access uh, as a over ideology. Because when Trump was in power, they weren't speaking out against the state. Uh, they weren't speaking out in favor of Jews living in Judea and Samaria. That's another thing. They never come out in favor of Jews living in Judea and Samaria. Well, the Arabs, every time they're on television, the Arabs scream about the occupation, about the settlements, condemn them. Jewish leaders, when they go on television outside of ZOA, and never say we have a right to live in Judea and Samaria, just as Arabs uh, uh, live in Israel. So no, this is their belief system out of fear, out of pathetic fear. It is not to try to have access and uh, uh, and and be invited to uh, to the White House. No, I believe this is uh, what they believe. Have you had individuals come up to you and say, you know, Mort, uh, you were right. You were talking about the, about, uh, uh, you were saying that a Palestinian state is not a good idea already since the, the beginning of the Oslo Accords in the early 90s. And you've been very consistent in your messaging. You opposed the pullout of Israel from the Gaza Strip in 2005. And we see what Gaza's turned into uh, in the 18 years since. Are are people now waking up and saying, you know, you, you got it right. You You were saying it the whole time. Uh, the leaders of the organizations have not said this to me. Uh, people in lower levels of the organizations have said it to me. In fact, what, when it came to you mentioned the Gaza withdrawal, we've had two votes uh, at the Conference of Presidents, maybe three in the 30 years I'm there. One of them was the Gaza withdrawal. We had a vote, do you support throwing the Jews out of Gaza and, and run Samaria or not? And do, you, and do you know what the vote was? It was 50 to one. ZOA alone voted against it. It means every group, Orthodox, you, you, you know, from Jinsa to Orthodox Union to Young Israel uh, to Amita, Muna, APAC, they all voted in favor of it. And that Again, was then, yeah. This is the Jewish people so afraid of our enemies saying, you know, let's appease them so, they'll, they'll, so they won't hate us as much. They won't hurt us as much. Uh, what about all the... And also, you know, one other thing. <laughs> a thing that should be talked about is that they have been offered a state four times in the last 20 years and turned it down. People forget that. And uh, you know, I've talked to Netanyahu and other leaders. Why aren't you mentioning things like that? You've offered a mistake. And why aren't you pushing back? This is very important. At all the rallies we see, end the occupation, Jerusalem is the capital of, uh, of, of Palestine, uh, genocide, apartheid. Why aren't Israeli officials, every time they speak in a speech or on TV or radio, explain that there's no occupation, push back. Jerusalem is not holy to Muslims, never has been. Abbas is a monster terrorist, a monster killer. The worst Bibi says about Abbas, he's not a partner for peace. That's the strongest statement he'll make. Would he say that about Hitler? He's not a partner for peace? He's a monster killer. We should demonize the demon that is Abbas. And we should ex explain the night nonsense of genocide. You know, I was just asked a few years ago, at Brown University, why aren't I speaking, an Arab asked me, why aren't you speaking about this genocide? I said, it's interesting you asked that question. I said, in 1948, there were 150,000 uh, Palestinian Arabs in this area. Today, there are 2 million. I said, whoever is in charge of Israel's genocide program has to be fired immediately. It's not working. And do you know the next day in the Brown University newspaper, they wrote about my speech at Brown, and they wrote, Morton Klein expressed chagrin that the genocide program wasn't working? <laughs> This is the, the level of, of intellectual capability in some of our campuses. And because of what's been going on at the campuses, as well as on social media, um, we're starting to see the real outgrowth of anti-Semitism, both soft and violent forms uh, all across the United States right now. Um, tell me as a Jew, do you feel as comfortable living in the United States as you did previously? My wife and I, uh, for the first time in our married life, have begun to discuss, should we stay in America? We are afraid as Jews. I'm a proud Jew. I wear a yarmulke outside. I, I wear a Jewish star. But yes, uh, most of my friends are now becoming afraid. Kids on campuses, ZOA has an entire campus program as well as full-time lobbyists, as well as a legal division. And we are the ones who fought to change Title VI of the Civil Rights Act to cover Jews. It only covered blacks and Hispanics before that. 
we at ZOA single-handedly changed that. So now all these lawsuits you see at campuses about the harassment of Jews is due to the work of, of the Zionist Organization of America. I might add, we begged ADL, APEC, and others, and AJ committee to join us when we were fighting to change it. They all refused, saying, you don't uh, fight these problems on campuses by uh, 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 legal issue, legal means. You do it by diplomacy. That's our Jewish organizations. <laughs> so yes, uh, we, we uh, uh, our campus program, our legal program, we have calls from Jews all the time now saying they're afraid. We actually hear people saying they're afraid for their lives, that, that on campus they're screaming intifada, globalized intifada, uh, and they become afraid. It, it's, it's, it's devastating. Where is Deborah Lipstadt making a major speech? Where is, uh, where is uh, the President of the United States Biden making a major speech that this is intolerable? We will not accept that here. We don't see it. So yes, I, I, I as a, an American Jew, I have become much more nervous uh, about uh, what's happening to my people in America. And uh, most Jews, I think a survey just showed that 78% of Jews feel less safe now than they did before October 7th. Yeah, the, the irony. You know, after we have a situation where we're massacred and these atrocities occur, you think people have more sympathy for Jews and be supporting us, and the opposite has happened. And I can't explain that. I, can't, I just can't explain it. Uh, I want someone who understands psych psychology better than me to explain how this could have happened after this event, where the opposite really should have happened. Are you seeing any kind of strengthening of uh, members of the Jewish community in the face of the, the anti-Semitic <laughs> threats and in the face of all the political <laughs> pressure against the state of Israel? I find that people are feeling more Jewish than ever. They, they're forced to confront the fact we're Jews because everyone looks at us as Jews with their enmity. Uh, I find people feeling closer uh, to wanting to go to shul and synagogue uh, since this has happened. Uh, I've had more speaking invitations to speak about this since happened. Yes, I think more of the American Jews are now feeling more Jewish, wanting to be more Jewish despite th this uh, onslaught, <laughs> and, and wanting to turn to God more than they ever did before uh, to help us because we do need, we need the, the, the intervention from Hashem to help us in this really, uh, the, I would say maybe one of the most dangerous times for Jews since the 30s. I've never seen anything like it. So... Uh, so we have to keep fighting, and uh, we're, we filed more Title VI complaints than any other organization. And uh, I, I speak everywhere. I'm giving, I have three or four speeches in March alone. So more people want to hear from an organization like us who understood the truth uh, from when Oslo began. Uh, uh, by the way, let me mention another interesting point when, uh, about statehood. Olmert offered, Ehud, Prime Minister Ehud Olmert offered 97% of Judea and Samaria, 3% of Israel proper, half of Jerusalem, billions of dollars in aid, offered virtually everything they could ask for, and it was turned down by Abbas. I asked Omer, how on earth could you have offered it? How on earth did they turn it down? And do you know what Omer said to me? It's a private conversation I'm revealing. <laughs> he said, Abbas said to me, you must get rid of three clauses in the agreement and I'll sign it. What three? <laughs> One, that uh, we must get rid of the clause saying we accept Israel as a Jewish state. We'll never do that. Two, you must get rid of the clause that limits us to only 150,000 Palestinian Arabs we can bring into Israel. We want no limits. Because they wanted to flood Palestinians into the remainder of Israel. And destroy it as a Jewish state. Three, I want the clause eliminated that says no further claims. Imagine no further. And Omer says, I said to Abbas, but that's what this is about. That's the purpose. We're giving you everything. So it's over. What more proof do you need? Offer the state on, on virtually everything they requested, and they say no, because the issue has never been land. It's a religious war against the Jewish people. Land will not do it. So a Palestinian state will not resolve the problem. It'll make it worse because it'll strengthen the Palestinian Arabs uh, to be able to bring in more arms, make more deals with uh, other countries. Uh, this will be a disastrous mistake and I'm sorry that this Israeli government is not speaking out more strongly about the danger uh, of this possibility, that this is our holy land. And, and, and as I said, we've got to start pushing back on the lie of occupation, the lie about Jerusalem, the lie of Abbas, the lie of genocide and apartheid. We're not doing it. You know, Israelis say to me, the media is so biased against us. I say, your own leaders don't push back 
and tell the truth about these lies. So what do you expect from the media? More kind, National President Zionist Organization of America. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for all your work, your holy work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.